26th, a regular <coughs> city council meeting. Uh, Mayor Castillo's out tonight. Also, uh, John Uri Nieto, Councilman Nieto, will also be out. We do have a quorum. Councilman Ortiz, Councilman Jimenez, <coughs> Councilwoman Caricu. I'm going to ask the pastor of the Florida United Methodist Church to lead us in invocation. Please stand. God, we are a country that is greatly blessed, and we thank you, gracious God, for not only the blessings of the fall us as a nation, but as a state and even as a community. We thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of Floresville, Texas, USA. We ask you, gracious God, that you help us to rise above the transitory cares of this world. We ask you, gracious God, that we might align ourselves with your spirit, that we might be better than we are, that we might serve you in peace and with justice in the communities in which we serve. We thank you, gracious God, for those law enforcement officers and medical personnel and those people, dear Lord, behind the scenes that take care of our parks and our streets. We're very grateful, gracious God, for them and for what they do to make this place a better place for all your children. We lift up to you, dear God, right now, our city council, and pray, gracious God, your hand to be upon them and to guide them and the community at large. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Please uh, remain standing. I believe we have a Boy Scout. Eagle Scout. Eagle Scout. Enrique Montoya will lead us in the, the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> yes. And the text. <coughs> Good evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God. One Thank you. Under old business, we have uh, minutes from January 28th, February 4th, February 11th, and February the 25th. Council, we don't have three council members that were present during these meetings. So I'm going to ask that we table each item. If we could go to item 1A and make a motion to, uh, to table that. So moved. Second. I second. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 4-0. 1B. I'll make the motion. Motion by Jimenez. Second. Second by Ortiz. All in favor. Aye. <coughs> Motion carries 4 0, 1 C. Okay. Ms. makes motions are second. Second. Second by Ortiz. All in favor? Aye. 1 D, February the 25th. I make a motion. Motion by Cantu. Second. Second by Ms. All in favor? Motion carries. You got all those votes, uh, Madam <coughs> Secretary? Yes. Okay. Uh, presentation. Under 2A, I'm sorry, citizens' input. I'm sorry. Thanks for reminding me. Is it okay? Please. Thank you. Good evening, Council. My name is Sarah Kennedy. I'm resident of Floresville. And uh, I'm here just for a few minutes. The Floresville Mighty Tiger Band is doing their last concert for the year, and I've got a son who's performing, so I've got to run. But I wanted to say a special thank you to our city manager. I don't see her tonight, but I don't know where she is. She okay? Yes, yes. yes. Um, to our city manager, Mrs. Henrietta Turner, uh, to the operations director, Mr. David Vasquez, 
to the street. Uh, Department Superintendent Alex Trevino and um, other street people, uh, street maintenance people, Andres, uh, Hernando, and Robert. Last week, there was an issue on my street that needed immediate attention, and they got right on it. Uh, for some reason, well, y'all know I live on Railroad Street directly behind the high school auditorium, and um, the Floresville High School football field is at the end of my street, where it turns right to um, Ponderosa, I believe. And you know those little streets back there have recently been repaved. Railroad was supposed to be repaved, but it, I was told it's too, too bad. It can't be repaved yet. We're just going to keep living with our bad street. But um, while that was being repaved, somewhere along the line, someone left a five-gallon bucket of rubber cement, or roof cement, a five full five-gallon bucket of roof cement, which is a, a black, tarry, liquid kind of stuff. And it was set a little off kelter, a little rock, right in the drainage exit from the football field. And you know all the rain we've been having, and how that's an artificial field. So water just gushes out of there. And that full bucket sitting on a tilt was dripping all night long. And it dripped that black tarry roof cement into the drainage water all down my street. I noticed at 8 o'clock in the morning on my way to work that there was some black tar and mess, not just in front of my yard, all into the grass area of my yard, but my neighbor, Mrs. Uh, Mary Ann Reed, she's an elderly widow woman, and the Solis family at the end of the street. And I was concerned, and I said, hmm, I'll have to take care of that later. I had to hurry to get to work. So on my way back um, from post to, to uh, for my lunch break, I called Henrietta Turner at about 12.30 or so, and I said, Henrietta, I'm concerned. I think this may be an emergency, um, but it looks like some ugly, toxic waste kind of stuff. I don't know what it is. It kind of appears to be some kind of illegal dumping. So she said, I'll look, I'll look into it. So she did, and she called uh, David Vasquez, and within 30 minutes, 40 minutes, they were there. Bam. And they looked at it, and they said, yeah, that's bad. And I had already investigated and found the five-gallon bucket, and we got, yep, that's what it is. And so all the grass for about a four to six inch area all down the street was nasty. It was disgusting. And so uh, within another 30 minutes, um, that's when Alex Trevino and his crew came up with all the equipment needed to scrape all of the um, dirt and the contaminated grass all the way down Railroad Street. And they did it very quickly, they did it very efficiently, and I very much appreciate that. So I want to give credit where credit is due and let you guys know that they did a great job, and my neighbors, Mrs. Uh, Mary Ann Reed and Jerry Solis's family, we all very much appreciate that that was done. We're also eagerly awaiting for the great news of when our street is gonna be completely redone. Completely redone. That would be so wonderful. Hopefully it's summer. Yeah. Well, I've gotta to run to the yeah. high school, but thank you very okay. much, I'll have a good Thank day. you for the, for the morning's judge. I basically want to do the same thing. My name is Bob Herndon, resident of the city of Florida. I just wanted to give a shout out to the Florida PD, the Sheriff's Department, the DPS, the Fire Department, the MS personnel. As we all know, Tuesday night a week, you know, we have that terrific firm. Anytime these guys are called to get out in the middle of that and, and take care of business, so it's greatly appreciated. I think they deserve a good pat on the back. Thank you, Mr. Herndon. Right Yes, sir, Mr. Williams. Oh, no, good. You keep your comments to yourself. <laughs> I'm Tomato Robles, uh, the Godfather of Floresville. Not from Lodi, but Floresville. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I have a few things that I want to say here. Um, this weekend, it's a very special weekend. To me, at least, it is. Memorial Day weekend. And I've lost a lot of friends in combat and stuff like this. You call me crazy, whatever you want, but you know what? This city looks like nothing's going on this weekend. And I mean, there's trash all over the side of the road, the media, the grass hasn't been cut. And, and it's, 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 it's sad that we have five city councilmen, the mayor, and the city uh, man, manager, and, and we're not doing nothing about it. You go down to 181 by the Nampa right there, and there's piles of uh, trash, you know, branches and stuff that's been there for about two or three weeks already. And then you go right there by um, Bill Meathers, go down the street right there, and you have tires piled up on a bunch of grass on the side of the road. We need to take no pride in it, and it's 
I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a weekend that, you know, people probably get out of their own business and stuff like that, and, and we should be setting a, a, a nice, beautiful example here so they can move to here instead of uh, going somewhere else. So it seems like nobody's really concerned about this. And, and another thing is that this weekend, you heard about the runaways that were going on and the kids shot themselves. I think that the city needs to get involved in the schools. They need to get involved in the schools because it's not two different departments, it's all one community. And, 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 and I said already last time, and I, I'm not going to say it again, but those baseball fields that we, we want to put in there, we need to put something more than just that for the kids to keep them busy or keep them you know, from doing crazy things. But we're not doing that. We're, we're focusing on one thing. We have another problem. Right over here with the senior citizens, they make their meals. They're losing that, that building there. And I wish the Florida would get involved and, and, and find a building for those people. Because without meals on wheels for the older folks, I don't know where they're going to go and do the meals. And, and I think that the city and the city council and, and all these uh, 4A and FEDC needs to get involved with them and, and see what, if they can help those people because they've been doing it for a long time. You know, and it's, it's, it's little things that make a big difference for the older folks and also for the kids in school. And I think that's very important because, you know, I read a comment this morning, if you're, if you're a Christian, act like one. But you know what? We can't be everywhere, but, you know, I think that at least the mayor should go up there and, and talk to some of those kids and, and uh, maybe try to open up because then we don't have no hotlines here for runaways or whatever. If they got issues at home or where they can go and talk to somebody. You know, they need uh, like an awareness program for these kids. You know, because I personally don't want to see my, my son or grandson or, or anybody's son run away or commit suicide because, you know, they got troubles and mom and dad are not listening because they're working and that's what happens. Mom and dad are working, and these kids, they can find love at home, and they're going to find a gang, and, and that's where they find their love at, and they get in trouble. But, like, like I said, I think that you know, we need to be, we get proactive. There's a lot, a lot of things that we need to do besides baseball fields. You know, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other substance comments? And now we'll go on to a uh, presentation. <coughs> Dwayne Duke from uh, Phelps regarding the 2016 amended operating budget. Mr. Duke, you have the floor. Thank you, Councilman. Yes, I, I'm here to present the amended uh, Florida Electric Light Power System amended budget for 2016. <coughs> Before I get into the numbers and some graphs that you have, I just want to talk a little bit about what it drove us to uh, amend the budget, which is, I think, not, not a particularly normal thing. Uh, at the beginning of this year, which is our fiscal year, we had identified 623 poles in our system that were uh, at risk, meaning that they had been identified that, that these were poles that were in bad condition that were, you know, potentially could fall over that break and, and cause damage, injury, or worse. Uh, because you know we have a live line at the top. So uh, presented this to the board and uh, asked them to uh, consider amending the budget, which they are both made approved. But um, one of the reasons that we got to this position was that with all of the oil field growth, we really spent a lot of time invested in you know extending our, our system to our customers, which is you know, priority, but it, it led some neglect here. So as we're going through this, we, we've identified them. We found that about 50% of these poles would be done with a capital budget, and about 50% would be done out of a um, maintenance budget or operating budget. So um, um, when I'm talking here, it'll be just, just from the operating budget perspective, we didn't change the capital budget. Um, we have two contract crews from a chain electric contractor doing these replacements. They've been doing this since the beginning, but since last quarter of last year is continuing through now. Um, through the month of April, uh, which is the last month we closed uh, financially, we've done 389 of 623 policies, so some good success there. Uh, if I could direct your attention to page two of the handout. We amended, the, the board amended the budget, and uh, Phelps has a reserve and uh, 
prepare a calendar um, that only the board can authorize the expenditure on it. $725,000 was, was uh, taken out of that account that had a balance of $800,000 and um, put into the operating budget. That shows up under the distributions heading here under the line of system maintenance, which is not being lined down in, in the handout. If you look under the two, 2016 budget column, you'll see a figure of $2.703 million. All $725,000 went into that, that part of the budget. So it, it increased just this one line item here, and of course the bottom line by $725,000 as well. That, all of that money is earmarked towards replacing these posts. So that addition to the roughly 300,000 we already had in this account for, for that, we're spending a million dollars out of the operating budget for full replacement. Any questions so far? So that should be a savings in the long run. It will be a savings in the long run, absolutely. But it's a significant investment on at this point in time in the short term. If you will, there any question for Mr. Duke? What was the plan on time frame to do on these? Do you have a format there that's going to follow? It's uh, what areas are you going to hit first? Uh, the polls are scattered all over the place. So there's there's clumps here and there, but they're, they're throughout the system um, that these 623 have been identified. Um, we're, we're attacked the they have kind of a grading system of which is the worst probable, or the, the highest priority versus the lowest priority. So we've attacked them in that work, the highest priority first. It doesn't actually go over the board Are we doing those in house or are you contracting? No, it's contract for specifically for this. And um, if we were to try to do this with our crews, they're capable of doing it, but that would consume their time completely. They would have no time for it line extensions and other things, and so in order to do it timely, uh, we felt like using the contract was the best method. Are we short on manpower, or? I, I wouldn't say we're short on manpower, no. It's no, just an extraordinary project. I mean, this is a peak. No, I understand. So. That's why I was asking. I didn't know if y'all going to do like 50 polls uh, every month, or? They're, they're averaging, actually, about 50 polls, 25 to 50 polls a month at this stage. So. Since we've done 389 of the 623, we're about 60% finished four months into the year. So we're, we'll finish it this year. How long is it going to take? Well, I, I, I would, we don't have a definitive timeline, but I would say you know, we ought to be done by the September time frame just at the rate we've been going. Assuming we don't have storms like we've just, <laughs> just experienced. Yeah, I know we lost a lot of was here at one time. Yes, you know, into this bad storm. But I, I don't know if you're just going to take it in stages and maybe do it in-house and maybe save some more money uh, or, um, or hire a couple extra people to alleviate. Right. Like I said, we have Chain Electric as a contractor on board. We've given this project to them to, you know, this is what they're doing is full replacements on at this stage, other than emergency help that we need to the storm. When they get through with that, if we have other work, we might use them. If we don't, then we release the contract. Mm -hmm. Other questions? If nothing else, uh, thank you, Mr. Duke. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, financials by our comptroller, Ms. Moreno. Financials from April 2016, the revenue expense and fund balances and sales tax report. <coughs>
Total expenditures, 2,324 in 304, uh, leaving us a percentage year to date of about 56% of what was budgeted for the, for the entire year. For uh, water fund, revenues are $781,038. Uh, expenditures year to date are $680,471 given us 48% uh, uh, expenditures over budget. Wastewater fund, fund 222, year to date revenue is 582,515. Current expenditures is 552,659, giving us a percentage of 45%. Um, on the bottom of the page, I have a summary of taxes collected, sales tax, and I have been keeping a close eye on these because it's been fluctuating. In the period of seven months, there's only one month that we had a very slight uh, increase on sales tax. This month, it went back down. The sales tax collected total as a whole, it was 224258 the city allocation was 112,129, giving us a decrease of $1,987 compared to the prior April of 2015. This gives us year to date a decrease of 63,330 for the year. Considering that we estimate, uh, estimate collecting in between $1,250 to $1,500 500,000 on uh, sales tax, this is a very low decrease. But still, we're still keeping an eye on it. When you mean a very low increase, you're talking about a very decrease. minimal. Very minimal decrease, yes. Just for clarification. Do you have any questions? Ms. Moreno, on the street maintenance fund, Judge Kennedy mentioned a while ago, we were looking at Railroad Street to do, but if, according to the, the work, and maybe David can tell me more of this, but it looked like the, the project was going to take more on Railroad Street than we anticipated. What, what will be available this summer to work on that street? Okay, if you look on your fund balance column, which is to your right hand side, uh, we begin the year with $814,000 in fund balance. And then so far we have spent 273930 out of that reserve. That's not including the revenue that we've been getting. Right. Okay. So more or less by the end of 2015, 2016, I estimate that we're gonna be getting about five hundred and forty thousand dollars on fund balance. Okay, so we'll have that five forty plus a two fourteen. Or uh, well, we estimated that we were going to collect $817,000 in uh, sales tax revenue. Right. Okay. And we have only collected 214 because of the decrease, and we're already at 70, uh, seven months. So I think we're going to be, we're going to end up collecting only like about $600,000. So we're talking about 600 added to the 540,000. So maybe 40? Um, I, I will estimate about a million. Because it's the, the, the project started so late within the year, some of the funds that we allocated for this project are not gonna be totally spent until October 1st, <coughs> or after October 1st. Okay, and then that we receive that funds quarterly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if we would start a project either this summer or, or even wait till next summer, we're talking about a million five at least. More or less. More yes. Or less. <coughs> All right. Any other questions, uh, Council? If there's no more questions, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I would like to address uh, <coughs> counting on the streets department. Mm -hmm. Page nine. Have you made any?
adjustments to uh, the office supplies since last time I told you? Oh, absolutely. I see none. I do um, adjustments, budget adjustments every month on every line item within its department. Uh, streets department do not use any office supplies um, funds. None? If they use anything, it will be like those clipboards. They are plastic that they care for. They carry around their paperwork. And I just bought them. I said I want to say about a year ago. So. So there. there hasn't been any expenditures this year. Now we have a lot of expense uh, supplies <coughs> in the fund but we provide to them pencils, pens, uh, rulers, whatever they need, there is office supplies. Towards the end of the, the year, that's when they start, you know, if they start going low on their supplies, that's when they start purchasing. So why do we have this item on the budget if, <coughs> if they don't use any funds? Sir, it's very low, it's $300. I understand that, but here in the books, it shows 300 and they haven't used a cent. They haven't used a cent, yeah. Because that's, we, that's we try to supply most of what they need. We were only purchase items that are, you know, big yeah. items that we cannot provide I, because we I have understand that. But we're spending money that 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 is not showing here. We're taking from somewhere. From other departments, yes. But General why, fund. Why have it here then? The, the 300, that, 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 that's the bottom line. Why, why not just erase the supplies out, okay. zero, and then put it over there? Absolutely. We can do that when we go through the budget workshops, and I think we have done that with water and sewer departments last year, that they had their own, the administration department or department uh, of each fund had their office supplies plus the department, for example water and sewer. They had the administration department and water and sewer department. Correct. They both had office supplies, but uh, the girls in the front were purchasing uh, most of it or everything out of the administration department. So the mayor addressed that in the workshop, so what we did is we consolidate all of these. And I just don't want to, you know, speak wrong about it, but these line items were already there and we're getting rid of them as we see the need to get rid of them. If we see that they're not using them, and then we'll take them. They're out. not since well, since October since October yeah. first. Yeah. They are. You're saying they are using them. They're using them at, but, towards the end, but, but but you're pulling out of the general fund, to right? Yes. Yeah. And so once but, let's but line say, line items is good, so that way you keep track of everything. Who's yes. what expenditures is going to yeah to what office. It takes longer for me to go ahead and allocate a purchase of a pencil to each department or pens to each department. They just put in it all in administration department. And then when they need something big like the clipboards or something other than it's more expensive that we cannot uh, supply it through general fund or through administration and then we charge it to the department. Well, as long as you keep track, so that way. That's the reason for the line item, so we can keep track who's using and who's not using. It's having a general fund where everybody gets their hand in the cookie yeah. jar. You never know what's what's going where or what's yes. what's happening. So. And in practice, that's what was happening. And I think you know every year that we go through the budget, I've been separating all of that and alloc allocating it correctly. That's good. Thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, the credit cards statement was in the packet here? Yes. Is that part of your report or did you want to mention anything about this? Well, if you want me to go ahead and, and let you know, but I was asked to just put these together uh, uh, for your information and if you have any questions for me to answer them. Okay. But these, now that we're talking about it, these are the credit cards that the city has. Okay. And every time that there's a change on a department, it is very wise to change the name of the employee that that, that credit card was assigned to. That doesn't mean that that employee was carrying that credit card on their pocket. I have in my office a file cabinet that is locked <coughs> where I have all the credit cards 
it doesn't matter, even the city manager's credit card I have in there. When it's needed, I have a lot where they go and request these credit cards, I take it, I release it, and then when they bring it back, they sign it back in. So that way I keep track of the credit cards. But because there was a change in my department of staff, I needed to change that Wells Fargo credit card. When the mayor and city manager sign off on payments, do we have a description of how the credit cards are being used? Previously, and I just found that out during the audit, uh, these payments were being done electronically. Once I found out, I said, no, we cannot do that. We have to do checks because one is traceable. When you do an electronic payment through the system, it assigns a check number that is 000000. zero, 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 zero. So every month, you're gonna have a check number for that, that number. So when we're looking for checks for them to be tested by the audit, we don't have an actual check number, so we don't know what to pull out. So I changed that. Now the person that is doing accounts payable, she releases a check, she issues a check, and we immediately go to the bank and make the payment. Okay. Instead of sending it through the mail, and it will take longer to, to be paid. But, you, but that wasn't your question, was it? No, what I'm talking about, and Mr. Ortiz and Mr. Jimenez can, can also uh, remember this, is that years ago, if there was a bill, the council would look at all the bills and look at what uh, needs to be paid. Do you remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember that one? Yes, sir. When we're looking at this credit card, let's say uh, Sam's, Sam's credit card, mm -hmm. does anybody see with signing authority, what we're purchasing at Sam's or what we're purchasing at Tractor Supply? Or, I or, or can we, if not, can we get into that practice? Oh. Is that something we could ask, uh, Chris? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's already been done. Well, that's a uh, previously, yeah. previously, it wasn't. And it's like I said, I've been changing things little by little as I find them. Okay. I know for a fact that now, it's sent to the city manager and to the mayor to be signed, and there is a statement from the credit card with all the invoices attached to it. Okay. And so now they have a check number. Supply, we can say, okay, there was a, a, long, uh, a lawnmower purchase there, and we will see that there was a lawnmower yes. purchase for $200 there. Yes, okay. now you can. Okay. They, they should be submitting receipts for everything. Yes. Purchase. Mm -hmm. Before Chris, it was happening, she was putting all that receipts together, but I cannot say that she actually took it to the mayor to, so she will review it because the payments were done electronically and I wasn't walking the checks to the mayor. So, so it was the receipts so, were attached to the invoices and everything? That is what's sent on the file. Okay. On the file we have the statement with the receipts, but did the mayor look at them? I cannot address to that. I think I don't that's know. what the, the mayor pretended well, like. Previously. No, what? Previously, since January, I, that's been happening. I believe the question is, Everything that's being bought and purchased and, and paid purchased for. should have accountability for what is correct. Yes. And and now it does. Okay. We have a check number. We have what, what, uh, that when statement. When did this change take place? Excuse me. When is this change? When did this change take place? Just it took place in between January of 2016 to March 2016. Wow. So. Before then, there Before, was no accountability? Uh, yes, because I do see it on the files, they're there, but it's like I said, I didn't actually walk those checks to the mayor and the city yeah. manager, so I cannot say, yes, that happened. Uh, Chris, how do we put that on our, on our agenda as a monthly report? May we receive all payments that, need, that are being paid for the month? We can do that as a directive. Uh, we can do that as a procedural thing. Uh, if you want to have it to direct the city staff to every month present those, I would recommend doing it as a council directive okay. uh, and having it be a formal city policy that this is what happens. Is, is there a, what do y'all think? And we can't do a CNA, I don't want to do that. To have a line item every month, that's going to be, no, no, no. That's no, be no, taken no, away no, from no, a lot no, of things. Uh, no, Mr. No. Deha? Yes. Uh, I do know that I can create a report that mm -hmm. I can go ahead and provide to you with all everything that has been paid for the month. Okay that it correlates with the financials. Okay. 
just as I've been also including balance sheets on the financial. So that is something that, that it can be done and all you have to do is ask for it. Okay, anything outside of the credit cards is done with a, a purchase order? Yes, even the credit cards. Even the credit cards? Yes, even when they, because that's something that I implemented uh, back in, uh, I want to say it was October of 2014. <laughs> When I did the, that they have to sign out the credit card, uh, that they have to have a purchase order every time that they release a credit card. So on the lock for the credit card, I have a, a purchase order number assigned to each purchase. Right. Any other questions, counsel? Yeah. And then this concludes my presentation. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Robles? Yes. Um, the question I was going to ask Connie on that one, we talked about the ledger bill, the $1 comes up. Is that in here? Yes, Mr. Robles, Mr. you want to address the recreational fee? The $1 you address it? Please. Yeah, sure. I put together a memo for council that I don't know if it's going to be made available for the public, but on the memo, I state that for the, the fiscal year 20, 2015, ending on September 2015, uh, we had revenues of $30,017.83. For that year, there was no expenditures. For the year of 2016, we budgeted on the budget workshops $25,000 for parks repairs, and, and then later on in the year, I want to say it was in February when we came in with the budget amendment, we amended $47,767, giving us an expenditure budget of $72,767. That will give us a remainder fund, fund balance at the end of 2016 of $33,152.96. So I have another question: the cemetery. Who's in charge of the cemetery, and why cemetery got so much money, and and like parts don't have enough money here? The cemetery funds. It's got eighty-five thousand dollars. been a, a carryover balance. The budget, we only budgeted $10,000. Correct. Yeah. That's been a carryover from year to year. But that money is used for, for, for what? Uh, for maintenance? For maintenance of the cemetery. Water lines, cutting the grass, fence repair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Council, uh, before we move on to new business, uh, with your consent, with your permission, I'm going to go into ex uh, Executive Section 4A. If there's no objections, Council, pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code, consultation with attorney to discuss legal implications of an alleged burial in the wrong plot the city cemetery and issues related to proper ownership of such plot. Can we have a motion to that effect, Council? So moved. Motion by uh, Ortiz, second by Pantu. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're going to go into closed session. It is uh, 740 with consultation with our attorney and uh, other citizens that are involved.